Hi, this is artist Sean Wells again. I wanted to do a little introduction on Spanish market. I get a lot of questions of uh, shy tourists and locals who uh, just want more information on what exactly is Spanish market and what are some of the art forms that you're going to find there. So I thought I'd answer a few of those questions in a video to celebrate our upcoming Spanish market coming here in a couple of weeks. So Spanish market, there are actually two different Spanish markets. There's traditional Spanish market, there's contemporary Spanish market. They're run by two completely different organizations, but they do fall on the same day in the same location. So the one that I participate in is traditional Spanish market. We go back five generations in Spanish colonial art, so that's where I'm at. This traditional Spanish market occurs on the Santa Fe Plaza, and they both happen the last weekend in July every year. The, uh, the wings of the plaza extend out and carry some of the newer artists. So as you uh, gain uh, seniority in, in the market, you move closer and closer to the plaza. And of course, the, the most special place is right under the governor's palace where my grandmother was for many years. So that's the place of honor where we really put our, our more historic artists. In the center of the plaza, you'll actually find the youth market. And that's, uh, we're fostering and mentoring the young uh, artists of New Mexico, we teach them, they actually are paired with the master artists or a juried member of the Spanish Colonial Art Society. They're taught the traditional materials and methods and then they can participate in, in the market and they sell their, their pieces. They're actually highly regarded and collected by collectors because they have not only a really sweet, innocent folk art feel, but they're also a nice investment if you if you collect pieces. And I actually had uh, some people collect my pieces when I was in the youth market many decades ago, and I hope to reconnect with them one day to let them know I went on to become a professional artist and maybe that piece is a little extra special. Uh, on the north side along Lincoln, is the contemporary market. It's run by a different organization. It's contemporary Hispanic market. So both contemporary and uh, traditional Spanish market do require their participants to be of a certain percentage of Hispanic heritage. And so you're getting um, not only a genetic connection between the artists and the art form, but also a cultural connection. Many of the artists participate for generations upon generations and hand those techniques and patterns and designs down to their children and their children's children. We've been uh, participating in Spanish market in the art form of tin work. But I wanted to introduce a little bit about the different art forms. So in contemporary Hispanic market, you're gonna find a, a wide range of media and styles, and it's very open-ended on what you can show. It doesn't have to have a traditional theme or um, Hispanic undertones per se, uh, versus the traditional market where there are very specific guidelines on the imagery, the materials, and the methods that you're using so that there is some continuity between the art forms from the original Spanish colonial days to the artists that show now. There are a, around, I think, 14 right now different uh, categories within traditional Spanish market. And they all come from the original Spanish colonists who were here over 400 years ago in New Mexico. And they came from Spain, landed uh, in Mexico and South America, came up the Camino Real and settled here in northern New Mexico. Of course, they were embracing a very desolate desert landscape. They were facing mortal issues every day and they were already a very faith-based people. So when they settled here in New Mexico, they really counted on that faith. They had a contingent of Franciscan monks supporting them and they also had uh, soldiers to protect them who we refer to as the conquistadors. So um, they had their soldiers, they had their faith, and they had the settlers. The settlers relied on the, the monks for guidance and for um, reduction of anxiety for uh, the, the peace that they were searching for in this, this harsh landscape. So they were trying to recall many of the Baroque and Renaissance elaborate artworks from their homeland here in this rudimentary place. And so they were sourcing whatever materials they could. And out of that, uh, not and, and those people that were sourcing that weren't necessarily artists themselves. It could have been just perhaps the most talented artist in the group or someone who had a, a penchant for art or 
uh, maybe they were crafty or handy, and so they would find their niche in those uh, categories, making things for the for the colonists and for and to support everybody. So some of the art forms that came out of that include my art form, which is retablo painting. Retablo, the base tablo, tablo tablet table, is a flat board. It's a locally found wood like pine, which is what I use because it's nice and soft. And then uh, you apply a handmade gesso from materials you could find here in New Mexico. And uh, I use many natural pigments and we all use water-based pigments. And then that can be sealed with traditional uh, sealants, including beeswax and uh, pine sap varnish. A lot of people say, you know, they go to market and they say, ah, it all looks alike. There's a bunch of saints. I, you know, I don't get it. They're repeating the designs. Well, every time an artist passes on a pattern, uh, like the, each icon, like this one, for example, the Alma de Maria, she's always wearing a white dress. She always has a crown of roses, a halo, a white dove, and a lily. They all have symbolism, and the colors have meaning, and those are passed on and passed on. But every artist takes their own um, interpretation of that and brings their own style, to how they're going to take those formulaic pieces and make it a unique piece. And so I wanted to show a couple examples of by other artists of retablos. This one is by Juanito Jimenez. He's a Lifetime Achievement Award winner. And he teaches, uh, I actually got to take the, uh, the honor of taking his workshop and I won this retablo that day. But he has a very loose style. He paints, he painted this very quickly in a matter of minutes. Uh, his stuff is, has a lot of motion in it, and it's very playful. When you see his work, you'll see those qualities in his retablos. This one is by Alcario Otero, and it was gifted to me when I admired the lions. And his style is extremely traditional. His brush strokes and uh, the, the way that he makes his, the icon faces are uh, based on the traditional designs and patterns and he uses a lot of uh, very traditional methods. So you get everything from a slightly contemporary uh, interpretation to a more uh, traditional honoring design. And you'll see that range in all of the art forms. And many of the other art forms, uh, straw appliqué, um, one of the more interesting ones, uh, basque, I don't know if it, what the term is, but it's basketry from the willow branches. It can only be done at a certain time of year because the willow branches need to be soft enough and pliable enough to form, but developed enough to hold their shape. So they would collect the willow baskets and they would uh, form those and interweave them into beautiful utilitarian pieces. And that art form, among a couple of others, including copper engraving, are what we call revival arts. And those are especially unique because they are actually Arts that, art forms that are being lost because they're not being taught from generation to generation. And we're trying to preserve them. So they're very much like endangered species. And you can help out by supporting those uh, uh, endangered arts and making sure that there's a, there's a consumer resource for them to share their art form and to keep it going, uh, to teach the next generation the techniques. All of the crafts from the Spanish colonial arts did have a utilitarian aspect to them. So all of this is to help you separate uh, traditional contemporary, mar contemporary market, traditional market, and then the subcategories of traditional market. Um, so that hopefully you'll come and you can come and appreciate all the different artists you'll see there. My brother and I will be at booth 148, our usual corner. It's the southwest corner of the plaza. Uh, looking inward and there are hundreds of artists there there to celebrate the Hispanic culture and heritage We hope you'll join us. It's the last weekend in July on the Santa Fe Plaza. Thank you so much for your attention